I told you yes in yesterday's video that uh, the next couple of days are going to present a new challenge for you. Uh, so we're still going to be dealing with um, finding the area. So length and width, length times width will still be important today. Um, but the shapes we're going to be looking at are going to be a little bit different than the quadrilaterals that we've been looking at for the past four or five school days. Um, what we're going to look at today, we actually call rectilinear figures, which kind of sounds like rectangle, which you'll see one in just a second. But it's a bit of a process to be able to look at these shapes and find the area of the rectilinear figure, uh, which is what we're going to look at today and going to get some extra practice with it tomorrow. So when I'm talking about a rectilinear figure, it's when it's obviously got more than four sides. Um, but it's something that looks kind of like this. Now, this specifically doesn't present much of a challenge because we know if we're finding the area and we're measuring the inside that for this this shape, you could literally just count the inside if you wanted to. So for that one, we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So the area of this rectilinear figure would be 18 square units. Now, we're going to be looking at rectilinear figures that look like this, where you don't have the tiles in the middle, but you've got some lengths, you've got some widths, you've got all your sides labeled. Uh, and here's where we're going to do something just a little bit different. Now, when you look at this shape, and we know area is equal to length times width, you can't just do, hey, let me take eight and multiply it times four, or let me take six and multiply it times four. You've got a bunch of different sides represented here, and you've got to know which numbers you've got to use. So, the first thing you're going to do when you have a rectilinear figure like this is you're going to take it and you're going to draw a line. Now, you can draw this line horizontally. You can draw it vertically. It's really whatever you're comfortable doing. I usually like to, oh my gosh, is my mic on? Please be on. Can you hear me? Gosh, I hope that sound is on. I'm, I'm going. Um, anyways, I like to draw my line horizontally. Uh, and when you draw that line, really you're splitting your rectilinear figure into two shapes. Once I draw this line, I can now see, okay, I've got that big rectangle at the bottom, and then I've got that square up at the top. So once I have drawn that line, I'm going to label my two shapes. I'm going to call one A, call one of them B. So I've got an A here and B here. Now, this part's kind of hard to tee. Oh, I can actually do something to show you. Um, this part's the part that I really don't like doing virtually, um, but what I like to do when I'm doing these questions, I'll take my hand and I'll completely cover up one of those sides. Like, I'll cover up that rectangle B, that way I'm only looking at A. Um, and if you're at home, I know you can't see what I'm showing you. Um, let's see. You can maybe, like, take a sheet of paper. Sorry, guys. You can maybe take a sheet of paper and say, okay, well, let me, what's happening? This isn't working. Anyways, I think you get the idea of what I'm trying to say. You can take your hand, completely cover up A, that way you're only looking at B, and then completely cover up B, that way you're only looking at A. When you do that, that eliminates a bunch of the numbers that you're looking at. So when I cover up B and I'm only looking at that square A, I really see two numbers. I see a length and a width that I can multiply to get the area of that top shape. I see four and four. Now, I also see an eight right here, but that eight does not represent that tiny little side right here. That represents the entire side of A and b now if i'm looking at the two numbers that i circled that represents the top of that square the four represents the right of it length times width the area of that top shape get my marker back the area of the top shape four times four would be 16 square meters okay then i would do the same thing with a i'm going to cover up a that way i'm only looking at b and again, I see the two numbers. I see my length and my width. I see 10. I see 4. But again, there's a 6 right here. But that 6 does not represent the entire top of B. 
it only represents this chunk right here. I need the whole length. So if I look down at the bottom, I've got that 10, I've got that four, length times width for rectangle B would be 40 square meters. And if I wanted the area of the entire rectilinear figure, I just do 40 plus 16, and that would give me 56 square meters. So I kind of messed that one up with my shape and my, uh, my drawings on there. So let's go to a new one where it'll look a little bit more clear, got a little bit more room to work with. Um, but here again, you got another rectilinear figure. The very first thing you've got to do every time is draw that line. Again, I go horizontally, you can go vertically, you'll still get the same answer, but I'm going to break that shape down into two separate shapes. Now I see two rectangles. I've got rectangle A, I've got rectangle B. Now this one does not present much of a challenge because when you cover up that bottom rectangle and you're only looking at A, you've got two numbers, you've got a length and a width. Same thing when you cover up A and you look at B, you've got a length and a width there. You've got the numbers you need to multiply. So if I needed the area of rectangle A, length times width, that would be 24 square meters. And then same thing, if I cover up A, I'm just looking at B, length times width. If you don't know 24 times 5, put it in your calculator or stack them up. 5 times 4 is 20. 5 times 2 is 10. Plus 2 more is 12. That would be 120 square meters. To find the area of the entire rectilinear figure, I would add those two up. And I would get 144 square meters. So we're breaking it down, labeling the rectangles, and then just kind of doing what we do, length times width. Let's see if we can get one a little more challenging. Now we're cooking. All right, so here you have another rectilinear figure. You can't just pick two numbers randomly and multiply them, okay? So you can see that each side has got a measurement on it. First thing you need to do, if you're finding the area of the rectilinear figures, draw that line. I'm gonna go right across here. Boom, I've got two separate shapes now, and I'm gonna go ahead and label one A, one of them B. Again, we talked about pirate ions last week. We gotta kind of close one eye and cover. When I do this, I'm only looking at A. And really when I'm looking at A, I do see a couple of numbers. I see this six at the top. I see the eight here on the side, but then I see this 12 on the side as well. But you gotta know that 12 does not represent only A. That 12 represents this whole side. I don't need that whole side. I only need to deal with A. That's why when you look over here, this eight only represents the length here, and that six only represents the width there at the top. So I can go ahead and find my area of rectangle A, length times width. That would be 48 square meters. Then I'm gonna pirate eye it, cover up A. That way I'm only looking at B. And again, I see a few numbers. This 12 down at the bottom, I've got this four here on the side, but then I've got this six right here at the top. Once you see this six, you gotta realize, hey, that six does not represent the entire top of B. It only represents this small chunk right here. But on the opposite side, 12 represents the entire bottom. That's my length. My width is either gonna be four or 12. But again, we know that 12 represents A and B, not just this chunk here for B, but if I look on the opposite side, I've got it right there. So I can do length times with the B, 12 times four, that would also give me 48 square meters. And last thing I gotta do, add them up. Eight plus eight, 16. Four plus four is eight, plus the one that I carried over. That would give me an area of 96 square meters. So let me see how many I've got on here, because I'd like to give you the chance to do one if we can. Got one, two, three, perfect. All right, we'll do two more of these, and you're you're more than welcome to pause and try them on your own, um, even as I go now, but I was just gonna have you do the last one uh, on your own. So I've got another rectilinear figure here. First thing I gotta do, gotta split it. I'm gonna draw my horizontal line here. I've got rectangle A, rectangle B. Focus on one at a time, I'm gonna cover up B, that way I'm only looking at A. I see my length and my width. If I'm looking up here, I would go four times three because this seven represents all of this, but I only need this. 
So four times three, the area of rectangle A would be 12 square yards. Then I would cover up A. I'm just looking at B. I see my length and my width there would be nine by four because this five does not go across the whole top. It just represents this chunk. Same for seven. Seven does not only represent this side of B, it represents A and B. I don't need all of that. So I've got my length and my width for B. That would give me an area of 36 square yards. And last thing I've got to do is add them together. Six plus two is eight. Three plus one is four. The area of that rectilinear figure would be 48 square yards. So hopefully you're kind of seeing some things and going, okay, that makes sense. Um, but there's a reason we spend two days on it, guys. It's, it's okay for you to struggle a little bit or to have questions. Um, it's, it's just something you got to kind of work at. All right, last one I'll do for you or do with you. We've got our rectilinear figure. We're going to split it. That way we now see two rectangles, rectangle A, rectangle B. Going to find the area of both, add them together. That will give me the area of the entire rectilinear figure. So we'll start with A. I'm going to cover up B. So my length and my width would be 7 by 5 because this 3 only represents this small chunk of A. I need the whole bottom. So I can find that on the opposite side, which is 7. And I wouldn't use this 11 because it does not only represent this piece. You see that on the opposite side, it represents A and B. So that can't be what I would use. So my area for rectangle A, length times width, would be 35 square meters. Same thing for B. Now I'm going to cover up A. See a few numbers that I could possibly be using. But for this question, my length and my width are going to be 4 and 6. Because this 11 does not represent this side of B. It represents the entire side A and B. So I got to look on the opposite side here. I see that 6. Then down here, I see 4. Finding the area of B, I would do 4 times 6. Length times width, that would give me 24 square meters. And my last step would be to add those numbers together. 5 plus 4 is 9. 3 plus 2 is 5. That area would be 59 square meters. So, a little bit different. Still same equation, with, or still same process technically of find, doing that math to find the area. Just adding a couple steps in there when you've got the rectilinear figure. So what I want you to do is, I want you to look at this rectilinear figure here. I want you to draw it, put it on a whiteboard, put it on a sheet of paper. And then just follow the process. Draw your line, label your rectangles, find the area of both, see what you get. So press pause on this. I want you to solve it. Come back, see if your answer matches. So again, my, my lines are always horizontal. So I put my line there. I've got rectangle A. I've got rectangle B. I would cover up rectangle B. That way I'm looking at A. My length and my width of A would be 3 feet and 5 feet. Length times width would give me 15 square feet. Then I would cover up rectangle A. I'm looking at rectangle B. My length and my width would be 9 feet and 2 feet. Length times width would give me an area of 18 square feet for rectangle B. And if I want the area of the entire rectilinear figure, just got to add those two numbers up. 8 plus 5 is 13. 3 stays, 1 goes. Uh, one plus one plus one is three. 33 square feet would be the area of that rectilinear figure. So hopefully you got the same answer there. Um, so I can see how people would get confused trying to figure out what numbers to use. I'm telling you, the more you do it, the better you get. Um, we'll do some review and some games with this stuff tomorrow in class. Well, you're going to be virtual. Um, so I have something set up for you guys to where you get a little bit more practice on this. Um, because it is just a little bit different. So y'all know the deal. If you need me, reach out. I'm, I'm happy to help with whatever you might need. Uh, thank you guys for watching. We'll, we'll catch you tomorrow.